And here we go on Showbiz Express with Jay Leno. He's back, and uh, he's back in Jay Leno's garage on CNBC. Right. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you. You've been doing the comedy circuit, and you haven't stopped literally since you went off. No, the it's a lot of fun, actually. I, I, I was always a stand-up comedian before I had the Tonight Show, and it's fun to go back and do it again. So. You also had the garage, really. You were tinkering right. around not only in the garage, but on the website. How did that whole thing come about? Um, I just thought it'd be fun to do a, a, a web show different than talking to celebrities. Uh, so we just started shooting it and putting it up on the web, and then it grew to be the third most popular uh, automotive show on YouTube. So I thought, oh, maybe somebody would like to do this prime time. So we went to CNBC, and they liked the idea, and boom, here we are. I find there were two different types of people. One, they know nothing about cars. Right. And the other group, they know Lots of stuff, and you really know. Some well, we try to find the, in the middle. We try to find for people who don't interested aren't necessarily in cars. They might like the story of the car. You know, most Americans have some story. Their grandpa had a big giant car when they were a kid, and they went for a ride or whatever it might be. You know, friend, people like Francis Ford Coppola. Now he came on. Now he never even did the Tonight Show because he was kind of press shy. I guess he just didn't do a lot of those things. But when you tell people, look, we're just talking about automobiles and your passion we're not going to discuss movies not going to discuss you oh great cj wilson from the angels lawrence fishburne i mean i called larry and i said larry we'll come out and ride motorcycles and stuff for the show yeah let's do it okay and we didn't discuss show business at all and it was refreshing it was fun what do you find is the common thread of car lovers what is it is it the tinkering is it the well, I think it's usually the memories. They have some memory of something, either the first car they made love in, whatever it might, whatever it might be. Everybody has some. The car is really much more than Europe, where public transportation has been uh, the norm for years and years. Most Americans, they got their first freedom with a car. You know, when we, was a, we were kids, we couldn't go places virtually. You had to go places in reality. Like now, you can sex somebody, and the girl sends you a naked picture. We had to get on our bike, drive to the girl's house, make sure the parents weren't home. She would have to get undressed. You had to get the camera. It developed. You right. couldn't go to your local drugstore with the nude picture. You had to drive to the next town. It was a lot of work. And you didn't want to get caught. You were doing something else. That's right. It was a bike. lot of work. <laughs> when I first came out to Los Angeles from Washington, D.C., uh, I was working at the NBC lot right. on a syndicated show across the hall from, from you. And every day I walked in on the Midway, it was called, in right. NBC. Which car was Jay going to drive? Right, yeah. I know. Where did you keep, where did you house them then? Well, and I have a big garage. It's, well, but it became even bigger and you house them now. Well, it's 110,000 square feet, which is a pretty good size. And, and do you invest continually in, in classics? Well, no, sometimes you just buy old cars that I like. You know, if you're smart and you're reasonably astute, you go on the assumption if you like it, other people will like it. I mean, I'm not much for stocks and bonds. I can't pick those things. But certain cars I bought have quadrupled in value. So in a lot of ways, it can be an investment. I mean, on CNBC, that's what we'll discuss. We'll, every week, we'll have three or four cars. Which one of these would be the best investment if you're going to buy an old car? And we show you how they appreciate over the years and what they're worth now. And of the ones you drive, like the ones you used to drive onto the lot, yeah. what, is there a favorite or two favorites? No, I, I really do like Children, them all. It's, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, you can't pick. It's not fair to the others. Yeah. Um, celebrity guest. You got coming up, first of all, October 7th, the, the, yeah, the big day. Yeah, it's premiere, right, right. Who are you looking to have coming on during the year? Uh, well, let's see. We got C.J. Wilson, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, Mario Andretti, uh, Keanu Reeves. Keanu was really good. Um, Oh, God, there's a bunch of people. A lot, a lot of taping, you, you really spend the day with them? So yeah, you, you pretty much spend the whole day, yeah. That's pretty much. It's different than the Tonight Show. It takes a long time. Which brings me to that. What's it, in what ways do you miss the Tonight Show and that every oh, day? I don't miss it. I enjoyed it. You only live in the time you live in. I really liked doing it when I did it. It was great fun, but it's a lot of work. You had to write 14 minutes of jokes every night. No matter what you did all day, when you got home at 7 or 8 o'clock, you had four hours of putting jokes together. And you had to do it every day. You couldn't skip a day. Uh, you know, and if there was a tragedy or something, oh, that was even harder because you had to write around it. You know, you, had to, you couldn't ignore the subject, but you had to take in sensibilities and how do people feel about this. 
So, I mean, it was a lot of pressure, but it was a lot of fun, too. And just a couple more questions. How yeah. do you view late night now? Just, you're, you're the viewer oh, now. I think Jimmy's doing a great job. I'm a huge fan of Jimmy uh, Fallon. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's taking it to another level, these viral videos he does. I like first draft of rock songs, and I saw the one they did with the Beach Boys a couple weeks ago. That really made me laugh. Yeah, I think he's really clever. I think he's more like Johnny than anybody who ever did the show. Goes, and here goes um, your phone. My phone. Would you like to say hi? Good. Hi, <laughs> it's Jay. Oh. Um, and here comes Colbert. Yeah. And does that bring memories back of the startup for you, just watching what he's going through right now? Well, I don't know what he's going through. I mean, he's been doing a, uh, a show every day, so I'd imagine it's a whole lot different. But, uh, I mean, he's immensely talented. He's really clever. I think he'll do fine. Finally, you, back to the, where we started, you're on the circuit. It's clean. You get up, you go out there, and you've got an act that you love doing. Right. How much writing are you still doing? Oh, I still try to write every day a little bit, you know, do a little something. I mean, the fun part is when you do the Tonight Show, you do different jokes in the same place every night. When you go on the road, you do the same jokes in a different place every night. Uh, the advantage is, with the Tonight Show, something happened today, I have a joke about it tonight. The disadvantage is, after I do that joke, I'll go, ah, I got a better punchline. You know, so when you're on the road, you can do it one way Monday, try it a different way Tuesday, Wednesday, move this around, and by the time the weekend comes, instead of having a 10-second throwaway line, you have maybe a minute and a half or two-minute story, you know. And, and then you keep, and you keep on going. It's your first love in that respect, yeah, and yeah, keep on doing fun. it, and, and Trump it keep, keeps creeping into that. Act. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> as long as Trump's there, we'll have material. Jay Leno, continued Thank success, you. And, Thank you. and we'll see you on All Jay Leno's Garage.